Mm-hmm. Welcome to Niner Cast, sponsored by BetUS. That's Mr. Niner Cast. Tom Jensen writes for all 49ers. I'm Grant Cohn. I also write for all 49ers. It's the last stream of the day. We really need to get closure. Okay. Fans need closure from this game, and they haven't gotten it yet. I don't know if the team's gotten it yet. And it all starts with Kyle. He's not getting fired. He's going to be here for a while. He needs to improve. He keeps making mistakes that end the season. This year, it was not knowing overtime rules. Last year, it was trying to block Hassan Reddick with a third-string tight end who was not on the team the next week. What can Kyle do? What can the Niners do about his mistakes? First thing I think they need to do is be realistic and say, okay, you can't fire him. Jed won't. You can't hire an offensive. Yeah. And, and, and Jed's not going to do that. Then offensive coordinator Kyle would flatly refuse. So you got mm. one option. That's game manager as an assistant to the coach. And that's what Baltimore just did. So they gave the Niners an opportunity that they can use and say, there's precedent. Baltimore just hired this guy as an assistant to John Harbaugh. That's something we should do. And they need to hold Kyle accountable and say, look, failure carries a price. We know that you want to fly solo but we can't trust you to do that, especially when it comes to the head coaching aspects of the job. I mean, you look at the overtime rules and you say, all Kyle had to do was, it's just like the college rules, call up your buddy, Steve Sarkeesian at Texas. Hey, Sark, what are the rules? What should I do? Take a second. Okay, thanks. Bye. Done. That's all he had to do. Nope. You need a game manager. You need a second voice. You need somebody that, addresses those details that Kyle neglects. I like it. Um, I like it, but it also feels like kind of not being strong enough with Kyle. Like a game manager, sure. Is he going to respect him? Like he had an assistant head coach. Did did Anthony Lynn not have anything to say? Like I'd like to to see him. I want more from Kyle. I want more from Kyle. I'm not saying fire Kyle, but I want him to have an offensive coordinator. It works for Andy Reid. To me, sure, Andy Reid is the standard. Andy right Reid's humble. Andy well, Reed Andy Reid is also the standard. Yeah. Jed York should step in, man. Hold on. You're doing too much. You're you're great at what you do, but it, yeah. you you shouldn't be trying to do more than Andy Reid. He has an offensive coordinator. I want you to have an offensive coordinator. And I don't know. Mac Nagy's his offensive coordinator. Does Nagy call plays or is it Andy Reid? I don't know. It's probably a combination where Reid will say, "I want to do this." But it's yeah. something where he can interject. You know, it should, is that what the Niners should do? Yes. And the question is... Will, will they? Jet, probably not. Will, will but it's Jet like, it, it, if he could focus more on being a head happen. coach, he might know the, the, the rules of overtime. If he could just focus a little bit more on being a head coach. And hiring an offensive coordinator, I think, would solve that. It would. But will he accept it? And will Jed push for it? I don't think so. How about me and you push for it? Quality control right now. <laughs> Absolutely, Grant. Yours was diplomatic. Yeah, I, like, to, Look, I, yeah. I know Kyle. He's not going to want to do this. But it's like, yeah, but I know Kyle. He's not going to listen to a game manager. He And I don't know that he would listen to an offensive coordinator, but hiring an offensive coordinator would allow Kyle Shanahan to be the game manager. How about that? You're absolutely right. I right? just come back to... You do it. Yeah, you make perfect sense, Grant. No problem, but Kyle. How are we Jed- going to sell this to Kyle? How are we going to sell this to Kyle? All right, Kyle. It's not that you're not good. You're great. <laughs> Just let someone else get some. I don't know how to sell it to him, but it's what ha- it's what's for well, the. I think best you have the team. to sell it to him. Is look, you're damaging your reputation by not addressing there it is. the there head it is. coaching aspect. If you want to win a ring, if you want your reputation revived, you need to accept an offensive coordinator. And what you said that look at the standard in the league. It's Andy Reid. Why would we yeah. not want to copy what succeeded? Especially when one of the biggest problems for this team is the lack of situational play calling and adjustments. And that's where Kyle needs to apply his mind that knows offense and defense as the actual head coach. He would be able to see it better rather than being you know, the umbilical cord of his play sheet. You know, just He's got to see the game and react to it in real time. He's not. Yeah, I, it just seems like his shortcomings, the, the, the where he falls short is mostly as, I just think he's trying to do too much. I think he has more on his yeah. plate than any coach in the league. More. 
And it's like, I I appreciate how ambitious you are and how much you, and how you think you can do everything, but I think you got to delegate, man. You got to delegate. He does. Well, this should prove it. If he's honest with himself, he should realize that. And the question is, is he? I'm not so sure he is. But if that's the issue, it's just, look, you've been given everything you've wanted. You've gone to two Super Bowls and lost. We have to change. You have to change. And we'll see if Kyle's up to that. You know, I, I know that you've you've talked about and you know, talked to Belichick. The the only issue I have with that is he didn't say, okay, who's your offensive coordinator? And he says, you know, Josh McDaniels or Bill O'Brien. He's saying, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the chicken. You know, it's just he's gone. You, you can't do that. So I think that they're stuck with Kyle, but it might be only for one more year. If he loses the team, if they don't get home playoff games then Jed may finally look and say, I don't know. And then you've got Robert Sala and Ben Johnson as available candidates. Then you take a look. So I think that next year is when Jed should act. But between now and then, you have to do something to address what's going on now. Yeah, Ben Johnson does seem to be like the hot next offensive coach coming up. He doesn't. He's not from the, the Shanahan tree. He's a little bit different. And if you want to replace Kyle with another offensive coach, which it does seem like offensive coaches are the way to go, they're harder to get good ones. Um, he'd be one. He'd be the guy. Right. So give Kyle another chance with Brock Purdy on the rookie deal. And if those two can't get it done, you go in a whole different direction next year. So Kyle, in a, maybe you are on the hot seat. I mean, maybe this is you coaching for your job. I mean, I know you said you signed an extension, but Niners are rich and they're not going to go through a malaise, a downturn for you. As long yeah. as you keep them in the NFC Championship game, great. But uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I've never seen that. The team looks a little broken right now. We'll see what happens. After the last time they yeah. lost the Super Bowl, they were 6-10 and 10 afterwards. Right, right. Yeah. And a lot of that was injury. And, you, and part of that is because of how many games you play. And you look at this core and you look at how many playoff games they've played. It's a lot. And that's going to factor into, you know, how do they rebound next year? It's just, there's a lot of wear and tear. Yeah, what have they played, 60 games the last three seasons? Yeah. Good good gracious. And you've Moon already Man got says, the third oldest team. Yeah. Moonman says, go off, Tom. I'm I'm waiting. <laughs> Thanks, Moonman. Brand, brand new says, hey, George. Hi, George is going to be an infamous. Yeah. It's going to be a He's dog whistle to Niner fans for that. a very long time. Yeah. All right. So here's the thing. Niners used to be a mere lemonade stand for the younger people out in the audience. They were just a humble little lemonade stand out there in San Francisco. And they, they happened, they somehow, some way won five Super Bowls just as a little lemonade. Now they are a billion dollar corporation in Silicon Valley. We're going to call them Santa Clara Inc. And they're just light years ahead of what they used to be. But this time when they go to Super Bowls, they lose. As opposed to before, the little lemonade stand that could found a way to win. What do you think about the legacy? Well, I think when it comes down, Parag did that bit with, you know, they're the lemonade stand because they're not a developed business. Mm. The lemonade stand was 5-0 in Super Bowls because they put football over money. Santa Clara puts money over football. Mm -hmm. Jed saying, okay, I'm going to keep cop. Why? Because two playoff home games a year. He's the golden mm-hmm. goose. Jed mm-hmm. wants to keep that. Jed in his, in his victory lap said that it's a successful season regardless of what happens against Detroit. It's a Freudian slip. It, it's He values the money. Right. Because that's that's very literally job. it was. Yeah. Right. And so you know, his job is you know, get as much money as you can out of Levi's. So he's got a Super Bowl, a World Cup, and two Niner playoff games. And that's part of it. But then money over football also goes back to Prague. You say, all right, DeForest Buckner, who you talked about, he asked for too much money and they trade him. Money over Hell football. Hell yeah. That's right. And with that pick, they could have taken Tristan Wirfs. They traded out Tampa. They take Wirfs. Now I say Kinlaw. And then you go to McGlinchey. And Trent Brown asked for too much money. They trade him for a pick. And so they use the pick to replace the guy that asked for too much money. And they bring in McGlinchey. And who do you have? Right after that, all pro safety, Mika Fitzpatrick, all pro safety, Derwin James. 
Imagine if they had Minka and Wirfs. How right. many rings? Two. Right, but they were trying to save money at a, at a certain spe- uh, position. Right. Yes. So it's yep. even when you make those draft moves, had you drafted correctly, you still could have been out of it okay. But now the next aspect of it is, okay, what's the next money over football? It's Kyle. Jake Moody yep. over Robbie Gould. Money over football. Yeah. Robbie Gould asked for $6 million a year. Jake Moody is a cheap third round pick. You keep him long term. So, so they say way along, it, it's all money over football. And that's how they're in the position they're in of being ringless. And the irony and of yet all being this, close. Right. Yeah. They're close, but not quite because they don't break through. And then one of that is because of matchups that you don't have that one last dominant guy to win on the line like Tristan Wirfs would. Or you don't have that safety that catches the the flying duck against the Rams. I mean, had you had that, you beat Cincinnati in the Super Bowl. You probably beat Kansas City in one of them. So you know, that's that's part of the issue. But the the irony in all of this is that the reason the Santa Clara Inc. exists is because of the football success of the lemonade stand. Yeah. And so all of it comes from valuing football first. And until Santa Clara values the football first, they won't win a ring. Yeah, because you can see it on their like their on Jed's like arrogant little smile. Like he feels like he already won. Like, look, you know, we're we're on the pursuit with the, the pursuit of the, yeah. the search for six. What do they call it? The uh, quest for six. Quest for six. Yeah, the quest for six. It's not an actual quest. It's a marketing slogan. It's like, right. hey, we're trying our best. We're almost there. We might get it soon. That's all it is. The quest yeah. for six in and of well, itself and, is profitable. Well, right. And it, it goes back to, again, money over football. That's the story yeah. of all of this. I just think it's funny how bad Kyle wants to be like his dad and how bad Jed wants to be like his uncle. How close, you know, every few years, Jed almost, almost gets to this point where he's like, I'm going to. I'm going to be on the same level as my freaking uncle. I'm going to do this. And it's like, no, 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 no. Your uncle was 5-0 and oh in the Super Bowl. You're on your way to being 0-5. Oh There's a big difference lucky. between you two. Yeah, yeah. Well, and if Eddie D was still the owner, Kyle would have been fired after the Rams game in the championship. No question. So, you know, Eddie didn't well, play this. No. Jed's Eddie hanging fired on for Stafford after two Super Bowls. Come on now. Uh-huh. Eddie had yeah. no patience. None at all. All right. We're going to get back to our topics, but I want to look at the uh, the futures at BetUS, who's sponsoring the show. And I want to actually put some money down. I want to show people how it works and how easy it is at BetUS, where you get 125% sign-up bonus when you use the link in the description on your first three deposits. So let's make one right now. Who's going to win the Super Bowl next year? Futures at plus 600 for the Niners, plus 600 for the Chiefs. And if you don't know what that means, like let's... I have an account. Let's say I, I want to put it on the Niners. Let's say I want to put $100 on the Niners to win the Super Bowl. That means I would win $600. If, if, I, if, I, if I get this right, put 100 bucks on, plus 600 means I win $600 on a $100 bet. Chiefs are also plus 600. I could get better odds on... like it, let's, say, let's say the I think the Packers are going to win. Okay. If I put $100 on the Packers, I get $2,000. So... What would you think is the most intru- – who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl next year? What, what, what would you put your money? i put the my money on the Chiefs. Detroit. Detroit. When you have like your heart case. broken, you come back motivated. Ben like Johnson the Niners. will be in his final year as offensive coordinator. It's their go-for-it year. They've got $40 million in cap room and one of the best GMs in football. I like Detroit. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, they probably have better odds than the Niners. I mean, teams that – Lose the Super Bowl historically, don't make it back or or win it. Look at Philly this year, how they fell apart. Are the Niners one year away from being that? Could be. Maybe, though. Philly, I think they broke down for a different reason. They had no bodies. They had no players in their back seven. And they got old. They got old, and then they got empty. And I don't think the Niners are in that position. Remember with Philly that when they uh, extended Jalen Hurts, they lost seven starters. And that gutted the team. That was part of the transition. Niners How about have to the avoid Cardinals? that with Purdy. 
How about that? Uh, Arizona, it, I, wanna, it, it's, I still don't believe in Jonathan Gannon. I, I know he's done a better job. Eight thousand dollars, I win. If, they, if I, I mean, God, I'm getting greedy. Yeah, well, don't you get, get greedy. I would if I'm eight thousand. I would go Seattle. Mike McDonald with the the U Dub offensive coordinator. They could do good things, but it's Geno though. Yeah, I like Kyler. My my working hypothesis is that Cliff Kingsbury is the worst coach in the league, and that team is interesting. He's gone, but I don't want to talk about. It. Let's let's do Detroit. Yeah, twelve hundred bucks. Let's place the bet. That easy. Sure. Confirm. Yes, done. And if the Lions win the Super Bowl, I will be rich. So that's how you, you do go. it over at Bet US. Get over there. 247 customer support and 24 hour payouts. I just placed a bet at Bet US and explained what the odds mean. That was fun and educational. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Okay. What'd you think of the way the Niners treated Steve Wilkes? What'd you think of the way? What do you think? Who do you think is coming in to replace him? I didn't like the way they handled Wilkes throughout the year. He was kind of the in case of emergency, break glass excuse all year long. Oh, yeah. And I think that was wrong. It's just you're asking him to go against his system, learn yours, and start from scratch where he's not in his comfort zone at all. It's not fair to him. But I think they did have to fire him in that the players weren't buying in. And when the players don't invest, you have to move on. You don't have a choice. Yep. But given that, as you've said, especially when they're rightly, when they're this close at, at looking at you sideways, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, given that, as you've said, I think they have to go internal because you have to get the player buy-in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, what are you going to do? You know, there's the. Then you just had the same mistake you made this this year. You're in the same position, yeah. right? And so, there's rumors of Brandon Staley, but you know, he has the same agent as Kyle. I think the agent is feeding that story. Right, and so it's just kind of yeah, okay. It's yeah, that's his idea, but is again, does that you? Why is Nick Bosa gonna like? In fact, in fact, let's just assume that Nick Bosa is like the de facto coach of this team. You know where I'm going with this? Yeah, his brother played for Brandon Staley. What and if his brother what, did not like Brandon? Didn't Staley seem to like him. So yeah. I could all I could see Nick Bosa vetoing that already. Yeah. In fact, I, I think he just no, he just did. He just did. <laughs> it's over. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that that's not going to fly. Because the other problem with that is just think about the personalities. You can't have two Kyles on this team. That wouldn't work. It would be toxic. The team would blow up. That's what Staley is a little a little Kyle. Yeah. Kyle Jr. It's not Same good. Persona. Yeah. No, you need the anti Kyle. You really do right. need the anti Kyle. Right. And I, I don't think Wilkes was enough of the anti Kyle. You need someone extremely social and positive. Right. <laughs> Maybe with a sense of humor. Preferably. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you need all that. So that has to factor into the decision. I think that that's part of why you also need to go internal is you know the persona you would be hiring. And you know it has to contrast with Kyle. You know what the team needs and you know who you've got. So if it's Bullocks, if it's Johnny Holland, figure out who the best fit is and go with it. Because on the outside, you're just you're repeating the same risk of not having player buy-in. Yeah. It's almost like you got to ask him, all right, who you want? Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing it's going to be Bullocks, although he, maybe the issue is he's a DB coach and the front sevens won't want him. I don't know. Possibly, but you know, he's hey, also how about Fred Warner and Nick Bosa coach it? How about they coach it? They have such a say. Why don't you guys just do it yourselves? <laughs> Fred, you call the plays. You know what? No, I'm serious. You've been here longer than everyone else. Like You're going to know it better than why don't you call the plays. How about that? No. Throwback. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Fred. You can when, do it. You know, Bill Russell, player coach, won the title. He's like, why not? <laughs> you didn't like Steve Wilkes. I mean, he frankly no. did a really good job. You didn't play that hard for him. You made your displeasure that known, verbally, uh, non-verbally. You coach the team. Show us how it's done, guys. Yeah, yeah. They pay you uh, enough. I, I think that Holland would probably be the best choice because he's been in the league a long time. He knows this team. He's the, the top linebacker coach in the league. He's in the position to be able to see him front and back end together. Now, I wanted them to hire Holland last time around, and I think that that's still why he would be a good choice. Is that You've got someone that truly knows the league, knows the position, 
and knows from the linebacker perspective how to bring it all together. Yeah. This still feels like them, them firing Wilkes kind of feels like the Niners firing Harbaugh. It's like, whoa, he had the third-ranked defense in the league. You fired him. That defense gave up 17 and a half points per game. So what about what, if Johnny Holland uh, gives up 19 points per game next year? Are you, you going to fire him too? What is the bar here? Are you going to go through D coordinators every year? I mean, it seems like they just set themselves up to do that. How do you not fire your next D coordinator after a year if you don't win the Super Bowl and he gives up more than 17 and a half points per game? You have to. Well, it would depend on if the players were buying into it. Oh, but they like him. They're, they're friends. <laughs> His Come friend, on. This is a business. That, that was a tough one with you know Bosa saying that Kyle is his friend. Yeah, when he said it, I was taking the video. I wasn't thinking like the implications of it. But then as the game unfolded and they lost and they threw Steve Wilkes under the bus, it's like, oh, I guess he wasn't Bosa's friend. Ah, sorry. Apparently not. It's crazy. It's like in college, he had to kiss up to Coach Meyer, as he called him, because that's the gatekeeper of him getting paid. Now that he's paid, it kind of acts like DC has to kiss up to him. Well, he's... He's the tail that wags the dog, given how much money he's paid. Yes, he is. Highest paid non-quarterback in the league. He's going to carry a lot of weight. Plus, he's the most important player because they've invested so heavily in the D-line. The D-line has to succeed. And so, therefore, Bosa has to succeed. He's vital to their success. He's integral. He was so disappointing this year, and he took no criticism, none. And he casually put it on other people. And we gave him the nice guy, good guy award with the media. And I feel kind of like bad about it now. It's like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. I think he was, he was candid with the media. So uh, that's what that award is for. True. So I think that you can still reward him for that. But at the same time, you need to take a look and and step back and just say that you held out. You weren't in shape to begin the year. It took a while for you to get in game shape. You You came on strong at the end of the year. And so that's to be commended is that, in past years, Bosa was great early and bad late. I'd rather have the reverse. But it also tells you that in the future, the the usual prog playbook of stretch it out until August is something you really can't do, given that you've got to succeed this year. And so if you drag things out with Ayuk, what's, what's the problem going to be there? You need to take a different approach. He needs to be ready to go. You can't do this again. I think they need to learn from the Bosa mistake and from Debo. You know, both of them had drawn out contract negotiations and had a poor year coming out of it. Also, before we move on um, from Bosa, he again, he doesn't take enough cr- uh, criticism. He messed up that fourth and one play. Yeah. And he didn't take any responsibility for it because no one who makes a lot of money on this team ever does. Put it on Wilkes weren't prepared. Like, yeah, I did the right thing, but if I did do the wrong thing, I wasn't prepared. Cool. Cool. I don't know. So they all sort of shirk responsibility in different ways, but that's the common denominator of this team. Passing it down, passing it down, passing it down to someone who can't do it anymore. Wilkes was the one who got, who's hot potato this year. Sorry, bud. Yeah, yeah. It's a game of musical chairs. Sorry, Steve. Yeah. I have to go. You got to go, Steve. And it, that's part of the culture is that this team has always wanted to have an excuse of saying that we lost Kansas City in 2020 because Bose was held and it wasn't called. And right. Jimmy didn't hit the receiver deep and right. blah, blah, blah. I mean, they've always got something. And then the Rams, it was Tart. And you now Philly, it was you know, free Tyler play Croft. injury with Hassan with Roddick. They got rid of him immediately. And Croft, and he's gone. And now after this game, what do you do? Because you have to say this was a career-defining game for a lot of these guys. They yeah. might not be back to the Super Bowl. And in your career moment, your coach lost the game. Yeah. How do you respond to that? That's very tough to respond from yeah. or recover from emotionally. Well, what you do I is wonder you get what a different, their buy-in's going to be. What you do is you get a different coach, but Kyle's not going to fire himself, yeah. so he hired, he, he fires number two. Right. That's exactly what he does, which is brave. <laughs> Sorry. It's courageous and brave. Give him the Walter Payton Man of the Year award. Okay. Now we got to talk business. Niners have some serious decisions to make moving forward. Brandon Ayuk, not going to be cheap. All pro wide receiver means he's one of the top seven dudes in the league. He, if he's not going to, I don't think he's going to give the Niners a, a bargain either. 
No. 25 million plus a year. Are the Niners prepared to pay it? What are the pros and cons? How do you see this ending up? I think they have to because Ayuk is so central to what they do that you've got the wide receiver that blocks so well and that has a chemistry with Purdy and he fits everything they do. The team culture they want, the effort, the work ethic, it's all there. The skills, and he's ascending. He's an ascending player. He's getting better. And so you have to keep him. But if you're Ayuk, you're going to say, look, I'm better than Debo. I want more money than him. And so the question is, are the Niners prepared to do that? I think they're going to have to, because if you don't have Ayuk, then what? You got to trade him, and then you get a pick back. Now you don't really have anyone who can beat man to man coverage on your wide receiver on your team. Right. You've you've got your best route runner, your best separator. You can't get rid of him. You can't afford to. Cannot afford to. Absolutely can't afford to. I, I mean, only thing is that he's going to be really expensive, and I think the Niners could do what they did with Buckner, where they're like, look, we love him. Nothing against this guy, but it's math. Do, should we spend, you know, $20, $50 million a year on two wide receivers when we don't throw that much? In fact, we throw less than every other team in the league. Or should we trade Brandon Ayuk for a pick and draft another wide receiver? Like, that's what they tried to do with Buckner. Didn't work out, but they could try again a wide receiver. Well, it's also what they did with Trent Brown. So they've tried this twice, and it's failed completely. And now you're going to try it a third time? Good luck. Now, I understand that there's a lot of wide receivers that are very good, but if you get rid of Ayuk, you lose a lot of what he can only do. The route running, the separation, the chemistry with Purdy, all of that is specific to Ayuk. Can you get a rookie that can do the same thing? Probably not. And is he somebody that can learn the system quickly? The other factor is that that's a big big factor. This is Purdy's final year. This is essentially your do or die year because then you got to pay Purdy and then what? So I think that they have to go all in in this coming year, which is another reason why you keep Ayuk because given how fond they are of red shirting rookies, what kind of impact are you going to get from a rookie receiver if they're not willing to play him heavily to begin with? Let me argue why they shouldn't pay. Let me try to make an argument why they shouldn't pay Ayuk. Okay. They're never going to give him enough targets to justify it. They won't. No. I mean, he's great. On another offense, getting 150 targets a season, he'd be worth it. But on this team, in this offense, they're never going to optimize him. Especially in the playoffs. That's true. But even the unoptimized Ayuk is vital to their offense. If you take him out, the offense drops off a cliff because you lose the blocking. You lose the the ability to have a receiver that can beat a great cover corner. You don't have it. You're going to put Debo on a great cover corner. We already saw what happened there. Right. Trent McDuffie shut him down. The problem is that you pay Debo, and then it's hard to move Debo. It's like, okay, yeah, Ayuk's worth it, but $50 million between two wide receivers on a team that throws the ball less than every other team in the league. You're never going to get your bang for your buck spending all that money on a team that's throwing to tight ends and running backs and running the ball. So um, we'll talk about potentially moving Debo in a minute, but if they can't figure that out and they feel like that would hurt their financial whatever, the easy financially is trading Ayuk. And if there's some wide receiver they fall in love with in the first round, got to remember they, they drafted Ayuk in the back end of the first round too. So they do have some, you know, credibility built up there. Yeah, yeah. They've proven that they can at least identify somebody. You know, they identified Debo. They identified Ayuk. So they can, unlike Balky, figure out who's a good receiver. So that helps. But it I just don't understand why they didn't fa- feature him more. Backward. If they didn't feature either. him so much in the playoffs, why why are they going to give him twenty five million dollars now? Because they can't afford not to. Because the offense yeah. productivity takes too big a hit. Yeah. But the problem is that you made the initial mistake with Debo, and so you're locked in. But I think I think we should start looking at potential wide receivers. Oh, I am. I'm looking at receivers in the draft and seeing what they can do. Who's we a start, good blocking do receiver? That. Yeah. Who's who puts in the effort? Who's somebody that could potentially be an Ayuk for them? And so I'll talk about that next week. I'll have a draft piece on that specifically that 
if they trade Ayuk, then what? And I'll go through the scenarios. And remember, after they lost the Super Bowl last year, the first thing, one of the first things they did was swap out their split end, get rid of Emmanuel Sanders, and bring in Brandon Ayuk. So this is something they've done before. I wonder if they feel like the ex receiver is a little bit on his own. He's not really, he doesn't really go in motion very much. Maybe it's a little simpler. I don't know. I mean, no, well, could be, but you know, Sanders was at the end of his career. It's a different thing. Yeah, he just wasn't going to play anymore. Ayuk is twenty five. Yeah, you know, he's still got a lot of years left in the league, so that's a different situation. Okay, so everyone wants to keep Brandon Ayuk for obvious reasons, but keeping him and Debo Samuel on the team together is going to be a very expensive proposition on a team again that doesn't throw very much. So should they trade Debo Samuel? Can they trade Debo Samuel? How would they even go about it? Well, should they? I agree with you that they should. But the problem is that who's the real GM of the team? Kyle is never going to let go of Debo. Debo is his buddy, his guy. And Kyle also can point to Debo as his draft relevance. That's the one draft pick Kyle got right. Yep. And so can you see Kyle letting go of Debo? No. Um, but beyond that, you're going to need Debo to create space this year. And so on the cap aspect, I talked with Jason Hurley, the cap expert, 49erscap.com, and he said that you can do this. You can restructure Debo, and you save $15.8 million right there. You can re-sign Ayuk, and then you front and you deal with the uh, with the big signing bonus, and you can save another $7 million. And then in terms of extending Brock, you give him a gigantic signing bonus in a long-term deal where there's very little salary, so the cap hit isn't that big in the first three years. And he's done the calculations to say you can do all three of those things. So you can keep Debo, you can keep Ayuk, and you can extend Brock. You can do all three. But you can do whatever you want. I'm sure you can. But, in, sh but should in you? In theory, in theory, you can. Should you? No. Will they? Kyle's the GM. He's not hey, he can. Get rid of Debo. Yeah. 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 In I mean, theory, the Chiefs could have yes. kept Tyreek Hill somehow. Sure. But to. the Chiefs are the Chiefs. Yeah. The Niners are yeah. run by Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. And Kyle Shanahan is going to say, no, we're keeping Debo. Now, the thing that's interesting to me is like, even though we know Ayuk's better than Debo, I don't think that the rest of the league looks at it that way. And like, Debo draws more attention than Ayuk. Debo gets more looks than Ayuk, especially in the playoffs. Like, Ayuk's so essential to the team because he has this unique skill set and he can beat man to man coverage, but they still don't use him enough to make him a difference maker. Like, three catches a game in the playoffs, just he, they didn't give him an opportunity to punish a defense for focusing on Debo or something else. You take Debo off this team and all of a sudden Ayuk's getting double teamed and he's already getting three catches a game without that treatment. I don't know. I wonder what the offense would be like without Debo. I, I, it'll be interesting. They really struggled without Debo in, in games this year. They might be in a position where they may have to pay both of them and uh, start to throw a little bit more, but their offensive line isn't built to do that. No. Well, and then that's the, the next dynamic with the draft is... yeah. You have to do this. So it's, get a right tackle. Now you can you use need a right tackle and a right guard. And then yeah. that's part of it is that you have to deal with the interior rush, especially with Brock because he's short. And so I think was the issue Jake Brendel not guard identif was was Jake Brendel not identifying the not setting the protections correctly? Like what was the issue? Well, I think the issue was mainly numbers. It's that Kansas City was sending more people than the Niners had folks to block. And then the issue Kyle. on top of that was that Kyle didn't adjust to it. He didn't bring somebody back in pass pro. And that's because no. he's so married to the plays that he's created that he can't adjust and say, okay, I'm going to take one guy out of the routes and put him in pass protection. He can't do it. And that's why Kansas City gets nine unblocked rushers on blitzes in the biggest plays of the game. That's on Kyle. You need to get better in the O-line too, but – you know, bottom line, that's Kyle. You got it. Definitely Kyle. Yeah, it is. Do you think they'll trade Debo this offseason? No, no. I don't you trust Kyle for that. I can throw him in terms of. They're going to keep the team together Kyle and just throw the defensive coordinator under the bus and bring the team back. It's it was all Steve Wilkes' fault. Right. Sure. Yeah, it was all I Steve Wilkes' fault. Was yeah. bring back the whole team, get rid of Chase Young, Steve Wilkes. Ray Ray McLeod, and that's it. 
what it speaking of Ray Ray, why aren't they getting rid of the special teams coach? Good question. You know, why is Schneider still here? You know, it's why is he dad saying? said earlier today, Bill Walsh always told his team if there's a live ball and a and a punt, you fall on it. What did Ray Ray say? He said I do the same thing all over again. I'm a playmaker. And Bill Walsh would have told him, Yeah, and you're also an ex 49er. Yeah, go play for go play for the Bills. Go to Buffalo. Right. Enjoy Buffalo. And, and that's on the special teams guy. I mean, it's just you have to coach them and say, look, you fall on the ball, period. Don't be a hero. You know, trying to pick up that ball may have cost them a championship. And I think that that has to cost that special teams coach's job. Yeah, to and me, obviously, Ray Ray's, Ray Ray back, he's gone. Ray Ray's mistake is a lot bigger than Spencer Burford. I feel like Spencer Burford's mistake, mistake has been blown out of proportion. Like One way or another, there was going to be a free rusher on that play. Yeah. One way or another, the Chiefs are bringing more than the Niners could block. So you're either going to turn loose with Justin Reed or Chris, Chris Jones. Like, okay, okay. Like, yeah, you'd rather block Chris Jones, but either way, that play was doomed. Right, right. And so the question becomes is, okay, how are you going to deal with it going forward? And you need to have Kyle adjusting to putting more people in pass pro instead of Kyle the genius putting everybody out in routes to clear out to get the open receiver. Yeah, yeah, Schneider's got to go. Schneider's got to yeah, go. Oh, no question. Ray Ray's got to go. To. Schneider's got to go. Moody's got to go. Like they got to overhaul that special teams. Moody won't go either. He's another Kyle. He's a Kyle pick. Well, it, it, that's Kyle's means of, of cap savings is that I get rid of Robbie Gould and his six million dollars, and I replace him with Jake Moody at third round money. Jake Moody's going to be on the team for years because that's Kyle's pick. That's his pick. That's his yeah, nice. Great. Lucky well, us. And, and money enjoy over football. 49er fans. The Jake Moody yeah. experience. Yeah. Dale says some on Wilkes to uh on Wilkes to agree to those terms. Hold on. Some on Wilkes to agree to those terms to be the DC of the Niners. It's not like he didn't know what he was getting into with current D. Don't BS. I almost he understand what, what you meant, Dale. He he's saying that you no know, Wilkes knew what he was getting into, but yeah, but he I regrets still it. Think that, yeah. Betty regrets it. Serenity member for one month. Thank you. All day, every day. Kim says, it just seems like this regime with all the talking is just a bunch of smoking mirrors. It just seems fake the way they run things. Yeah. See what you mean. Ramon, Ayuk is slated to make about 23 a year. He needs to make more than that. Whatever Debo's well, making, he's going to make more. He'll demand more just on principle. And Amon Ross St. Brown is getting a new deal in Detroit and he's going to get 25 per. There you go. And I, I think Ike's better than Amon Ross St. Brown, personally. Me too. Seen them both play in person. Caesar, Kyle Shannon, keep pulling your center and killing drives. Yeah, that was crazy. Brendan Rice, Caesar Lazo. No. Could they get Brendan? No. no. Kyle picks his receivers based on separation. Rice can't separate at all. There you go. Nick he's Falcon. He's a great contested catch guy. He's, he's very Kyle's son, guy. but he's he can't separate. He They can't pick him. Debo's dead cap hit is $21 million if they trade him. It's true. Dazza says, why is everyone so shocked KC blitz so much? They've been doing it all year. Romo called the third down blitz before it even happened. Yeah, yeah well, so did I. I. I wrote in my 49er preview that they had to stop the DB blitz. It was a tip pick interception against Baltimore. KC used it against Baltimore in the AFC Championship. That was their go-to blitz. Lamar only had two completions off of that. You know it's coming. There's the DB on the line of scrimmage, and you don't do anything? Come on. Come on. Brother Bob says nothing is Kyle Levy's fault or Cabo Click. The coach, they'll get depth at O-line late in the draft. The big signing will be a fringe starter in free agency and a second-round pick guard. They don't value the position. B.I. B.A. might get moved, too. We all know Debo should go. He won't. Yeah, it, it, it's possible that Ayuk has moved, but I think that the, the hit to the offense is so great, and Kyle knows that, that they can't afford to. But yeah, Debo should second go round. and he won't. Yep. Yeah. Um, second round offensive line, sure, that's possible too. The problem is I that, see that for sure. most of the, the top tier mm -hmm. linemen go by the middle of the second round. There's a yep. drop off that once you get to the mid second, then there's a gap to the next level of players. Shady Luke laughed the second Debo got that contract. Percy Harvin with more size and worse route running skills. I would agree. I expend the guy he leaves. That offense ain't the same. It's a passing league. Yeah. 
I think Shady Lou Eagles fan, I believe. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah. But the other factor in that is that you know, they might become a more passing team if they get an offensive line that can pass protect. If they invest in that line, yeah. you're investing in Purdy. You're investing in throwing the ball more. That's the thing. Like Debo's a good fit for a team with a terrible offensive line because you can just throw quick passes to him and he can make things happen. Or he used to. You could actually need to be able to get the ball down the field. So you need right. a you need a couple tackles. You need a good offensive line. The Niners don't have that. Let's be let's be uh, frank. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't. They don't. No. Maritime Wake Gal, thank you for the five dollars. What's that? One of the things they could do with this draft if they so chose. 81 draft with Walsh and McVay is they said, okay, our secondary is getting shredded. So they draft Ronnie Lott, Eric Wright, Carlton Williamson. They've got their secondary for the next five years. Niners could do that with the offensive line. If they had the imagination to do that, this draft is loaded enough so that if you moved up in the first and moved up in the second, you could get two of the pieces you need, but are they willing to do that? I doubt it. I doubt it. And again, it's hard to say like the Niners learned their lesson and now they're going to all of a sudden start. <laughs> no. Like one, they don't learn their lesson. Two, I, that's not the lesson you learn from this game. The offensive line didn't get necessarily overpowered. They got outmanned. Outmanned. That's a different thing. So I can see the Niners definitely prioritizing D line again and finding, because honestly, they do, like, they don't have a D end opposite Bosa. They don't. It ain't Drake Jackson, it ain't Chase Young, it ain't Randy Gregory. They need a real wide nine DN who can set the edge out there like Samson Nebucom could. That was a huge loss for them. He's a really Absolutely. good player for this system. Absolutely. Yeah. The the concern is that the the pass rushers at the end of the first are twitchy light guys that can get after it, like Chop Robinson at Penn State. Yeah. So they have to choose. Do you want somebody to set the edge or do you want somebody to go get the quarterback? And Both. that's that's the question. Yeah, yeah, it could, but the, then the problem is that you overinvest in one position group. Yeah, if they take sure. a defensive lineman in the first round, it'll be the fourth time in eight years that they took a D lineman with their first pick. You That's can't true. do that and win. You can't. You got to balance it out. Khalil Camp says this team will never win a Super Bowl until Jed is relieved from his duties and the real owner shows up. Better yet, flies Kyle out her ranch in Ohio and makes him stand two feet away while she dresses a deer and demands results. <laughs> yes. Yes. Whew. Gold Tau says, seriously, what can we get for Kyle? First and a second. Seriously. I don't think you can get two firsts, but you try. That's what they you got asking, from John Rudin asking, back then. Yeah. Yeah. The coach says they're keeping Colton watch second round guard. Could I be. I, I think that Kyle will be defiant about that, but I do think there's a chance that they take a, a first round guard that they can look Daz at asks, Graham, oh, Graham Barton and others. Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. Go ahead. Graham Barton. Daz asks. And oh, go ahead. Um, Graham Barton, Who? Troy Fartanu, and um, the the kid from uh, Arizona. Now, those three guys are people they could look at who can move into guard and can also have the capability in the case of Fatana to play tackle. Hmm. Daza says, how are we replacing Greenlaw this year? I heard Aziz is a free agent. Also, we need another good corner opposite Ward. Keep Demo in the slot. Problem with Aziz is that he's one of the top 30 linebackers in the league. That means 16.5 million per. They can't afford it. No. Sorry. I'd love to have him, but yeah. Maybe Jalen uh, Graham or D winners. Boxing fan times four. Going to Cabo with Kyle is like going to a Diddy pool party. Don't go. Tell him no. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Dale says promote Brian Greasy to OC. Maybe Kyle would be willing to do that. I don't know. I would be willing to do anything to get Kyle in a different mode. Because right now he's consumed by offensive coordinator. You got to move him off of that spot. Definitely. Definitely. Josh Edwards, Kyle takes no personal responsibility and he's doing it. Well, hold on. Kyle takes no personal responsibility and all he's doing is acting like a victim. He did everything right. Poor Kyle. <laughs> acting like a victim. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Well, he's earned this. When you take no accountability, people are going to get out the darts. Yeah. And people, some people will defend you like you're a victim. Hey, why don't you leave Kyle alone? He's trying really hard. <laughs> Sorry. 
This will be in a music 88 says no Cabo. They earned a sleepover at grants. They're not invited. Go away. <laughs> Leave me alone. I like it. All right. Well, okay. I hope you guys have processed this loss better than the Niners have. Cause it's got another season coming up. Free agency around the corner. The combine is almost here. And, Time to look ahead. and Tom Jensen is a draft guru. You guys don't even know, but Read his work on all 49ers, si.com. I'll be posting on my Twitter a lot. He's at Ninercast on Twitter. He'll be around here. He'll be doing good work. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Grant. Enjoyed it. Fun time. All right.